Hey everyone, interesting video today. If you want to play golf in Grindavik, we will talk about that. We will talk about the homes being bought out. What's the latest there? This is not going too smoothly. And then what is going on with the lava that is thickening along the eastern part of the defense walls in Grindavik? Will the lava be able to get into Grindavik? It seems to be that this is quite the sneaky lava. And one of my viewers has pointed out and uh, thank you Bodan uh, for that. Um, I'll read your post and then we talk about this because that is very very interesting. Could the lava not flow over the defense walls? Could the lava sneak through underneath? And that would be really something guys because think about this. The defense walls are only built with lava rocks that are lying around in the area and then they're trucked there and then that's what these defense walls are being built off. So lava can melt lava rocks, right? Let's talk about this. Very, very interesting. So Bodan said, I want to start with this. This is an evolving lecolith. That is lava being injected under pressure beneath solidified lava flows. And we know the lava that started flowing since March 16th has advanced quite far, started flowing along the defense walls of Grindavik, has been diverted from the defense walls of Grindavik. But then the fresh lava that was coming out of the craters was starting to build up on top of each other like a thicker lava carpet. That's why they needed to increase the height of the defense walls because now we have a lava carpet, I call it carpet, the lava that spread out from 16, 20, 30 meters up to 50 meters or higher where the crater is that is still erupting. We have one crater that is still erupting. Since April 5th, it's only one crater. So what Bodan says is the growth and thickness is not from the splatter cone from that crater because that is where the pressure is being released by degassing. And that is correct, right? The new lava will not necessarily overtop the defense walls. The magma will burrow beneath them. And that is really a possibility. So they can build up the defense wall as much as they want to if that sneaky lava will flow underneath. And what exactly is an evolving lacco lift? So that is a geological formation that is in the process of forming or changing. So a lacolith is a type of ingenious intrusion where molten rock, like magma, magma's molten rock, has been injected between layers of existing rock. In this case here, the lava bed, the lava that has been flowing since March 16, the black stuff that you see there. So injected between layers of existing rock and usually sedimentary layers, and then it has solidified underground. So the magma pushes the overlaying layers upwards, creating a dome-like or a lens-shaped structure. And that's what you see here on these webcam time lapses that they have released. It's the webcam of the civil defense. Um, the time lapse is not so really great because it's way too fast. You cannot really see what is happening. But so I show you screenshots of it. You see like the lighter brown areas, the defense wall, and you see the lava coming up there. So not the lava, yeah, the lava rocks, right? But you don't see any red yellow glow you don't see a lava river that's flowing there that could cause this so that is the evolving lacolith and why evolving evolving suggests that this formation is still undergoing changes due to continued magmatic activity or other geophysical processes i mean we have the eruption still going full force from that one crater so this could mean that new magma is still being introduced or that the rock is adjusting structurally in response to the pressures and the temperatures that are involved there. So evolving lacolith are important for understanding the dynamics of a magma intrusion and the geological development of the Earth's crust over time, because this is not only happening here in Iceland. Here, it is very, very interesting because we have the defense walls there, and behind these defense walls, we have Grindavik. And you know, 
the homes are in the process of being bought out. The residents were angry, they protested. The company that was founded to just buy out these homes has taken everything very, very slow and it seems like very, very bureaucratic. They then said, you know, we will start early April. So people have made contracts to purchase other homes with like a three month um, period, but that has expired. Many people lost their new homes because now property prices are going up. Um, sellers are putting them back on the market at higher prices because this was already announced last year. So people thought, well, three months should be enough, but it isn't. Now they say they have roughly about like 190 something um, homes approved to be purchased and that they want to send out purchase contracts and that takes another 10 days for people to wait and then they want to do another 100 homes that they want to approve in the coming days so it's grinding and the residents are saying they're making quite a mystery out of it there's lots of uncertainties lots of unanswered questions so that real estate company is basically saying people have the right to buy back these homes and that the company wants to rent them out in the meantime they haven't specified rent them out to the home former homeowners or to other people because they're saying people can buy the homes back for the same price or like 95% of the fire insurance assessment. Um, so I think a lot of clarification is needed because you know, if you rent out a home to someone else um, who pays for the maintenance and everything. Um, so interesting guys, um, let's talk about tourism. I mean, it has been crazy. You know my opinion about this. I have the feeling that they're still trying to like load as many tourists into these danger zones as possible. Um, I don't get it instead of putting them somewhere else. So they want to put them in buses and drive them into restaurants in Vindavik so that they can dine there and then they drive them back out. So um, <laughs> Then um, the Blue Lagoon, my friend, the Blue Lagoon, I mean, they're opening up whenever they can, right? And then they wait for the last second for their emergency evacuation. And it's and they're not telling the people what's going on. So we've discussed this. Check out my videos in the end screen. This is really interesting. Many tourists are completely clueless that this Blue Lagoon is on top of a magma chamber and that the eruption is nearby that could, you know, send lava or gas pollution or it could erupt right underneath the Blue Lagoon. and. Uh, we've discussed this so then there were tourists that just don't listen and they're using the blue lagoon parking lot to start hiking towards the eruption site despite the warning gas pollution toxic sulfur gases stupid does what stupid wants i guess so three hikers had to be rescued they they caught cold weather and foggy weather they didn't even make it to the eruption then other guys thought it is a smart idea to cook uh, sausages in a pan on top of the hot lava. What they don't consider is that this lava, and as you see, it is still degassing. And guess what it could degas in higher amounts? That's toxic volcanic gas. But uh, yeah, then you probably won't be able to eat your sausages because you're whatever right um um some some off-road car or a dacha whatever car was driving off road and got stuck and and bs like this and in light of this i mean the civil defense says we don't want anyone in, in the areas within this hazard map that we have here from the icelandic meteorological office but on the other hand they have formed a tourism gremium like a consortium that uh, is thinking about oh we could build a parking lot and we could make a trail to the eruption let's make this a tourist eruption and then the head of the civil defense Vida Reinesen goes like no right this is the worst place the magma tunnel is going right underneath and you're walking towards the flow direction of the lava right um but they're coming up with new ideas every day. I feel for the businesses that are affected, but you know, on the one hand, you're buying people out of their homes in Grindavik so that the people can leave Grindavik because Grindavik is too dangerous right now. It has its own hazard level, crack, collapse, right? On top of all the other threats of gas pollution, lava, eruption in town, 
but it's like a Swiss cheese. There can something can collapse at any time. So they want people out. People are moving. They think it's too dangerous, right? Of course, people are allowed to stay at the moment. There is no evacuation restriction or anything. People have fought for that. They said it's our civil right to use our property if we think that we want to. But you know. The civil defense, the police chief of Sudurns, they say, well, you're in there at your own risk and you're responsible for your own actions and inactions. And they point out all the risk. They're also saying Grindavik is not an area for children to play because in these grassy areas and everywhere, cracks could open immediately, sinkholes, etc., etc. But we also could have sinkholes opening under paved areas. The pavement covers the, the hole for a while until it cracks. We've seen this all over the world. China is prone to this. They, these are not volcanic sinkholes. These are bad underground road constructions with sewage or whatever, but they open up quickly. So um, you want to play golf in Grindavik between the cracks. Um, you know, um, this golf course, the Grindavik golf course, is west of Grindavik, so it's not directly in Grindavik, but it's still considered to be Grindavik. And if you look at the aerial picture, you see these massive cracks. And of course, the owner of the golf course says they have always been there and people have thrown their golf balls in them and stuff like this. And I would say, yeah, that makes sense. They have been there forever. But we know through the earthquake swarm that has happened on November 10th, the rattling with so many earthquakes, that golf course lost one of its holes. I think it's called T. I'm not really a golfer, guys. If you're into horses, if you see that golf course, it looks like that is the perfect footing for a really, really hard canter. So I'm not really into golf, um, but it's, of course, it's a nice sport for everyone who wants to play that. So they lost because it was sinking and it was cracking. It was falling apart, basically. Um, uh, so this area is not safe from something like this happening crack collapse sudden crack opening and you know all over Grindavik if you look at this part of the Grindavik hazard map um, there is these old cracks everywhere these have been there like the other ones have been there of where the golf course is right and then we know through these earthquake swarms existing cracks have widened got longer got deeper and stuff like this so they're waiting for the next tourist season and the demand is high um, for that golf course. And I think um, they will come up with a nice tourism plan. I think, uh, you know, start having a nice breakfast downtown Grindavik and then maybe go for a round of golf and then go to the Blue Lagoon for a nice swim. And then if you're still alive, you can go on a hike towards the eruption and wouldn't that be great? So I'm joking, guys. It's really not about bashing these businesses. It's hard. They're fighting for survival. So that's why it's sad to me that they're not further ahead for a government buyout or supporting program for these businesses. They're buying out the homes, but why are they not buying out the restaurant owner? Or having like a temporary accommodation where he could put up his restaurant and make some money off the tourists and just not downtown Glenavik. I'm sure many people will go there not to have the food, just for the drive through Glenavik to do some staring and see what's happening there right while the the real residents are leaving it, it just doesn't make sense so what is it you want to replace the residents with tourists so will the homes that are being bought out will they be like short-term tourist rentals for adrenaline junkies or something like this it it seems to be a little weird to me guys that's why you know it, it <laughs> On the one hand, you know, people are trying to get their lives back to find another place to live. And that town is, is basically declared not safe to live. Also like the, the infrastructure and stuff is not up and running 100%. And, but for the tourists it is, for the tourists, the areas are okay. That's what I wonder. And I will keep wondering about this as long as they're not transparent enough, in my opinion.
And let's have a quick look at the earthquakes that are happening all over Iceland. You see the map here that's for all over Iceland and you can see it's still a lot of earthquakes along the North Atlantic Ridge where the two tectonic plates are separating. And there you see that's the Reykjanes Peninsula, you see the earthquakes. So it's still something going on. It's, it's been quiet the last few hours, but I think, you know, since today, um, it's catching up again a little bit. So we will have to wait and see. Um, so guys, that was a quick update. There's more to come. Um, check out my latest video about the supervolcano in Italy, Campi Flegri. And if you want to know more about this lava issue, check out that video as well. And um, please like this video. That would be awesome. And if you're new here, hey, if you would stick around keeping up with me it would be awesome. So I would love to earn your subscription. And uh, yeah, guys, I see you soon. Check out the Campi Flegre video. There's a lot of horse stuff and farm stuff in that video. So thanks for watching. Bye bye.